Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about the World Economic Forum that just happened in Davos. A great opportunity for the world's richest from the private industry and the political world to come together to discuss what's up with all these poor people. Honestly, coming into this, if you had asked me, Stephen, what is the one thing that Donald Trump is probably amazing at doing, I'd have said, oh, hanging out with rich guys in a white people country like Switzerland, abstractly discussing economic problems that they will come nowhere near resolving. I mean, that sounds like the final scene in Trump's movie where he finally does the one thing he's been training to do for his entire life. Now, the Davos Economic Forum is weird because it sounds really important, but it's a lot like presidential norms. Something that sounds important, but it really isn't once you really look at it. So why talk about such a shallow event? Well, it's kind of like the Golden Globes of world leaders. So first, let's talk about the elephant in the room, because a lot of people were speculating on how Donald Trump would do at schmoozing with the other world leaders. Well, he had a speech and a Q&A, and the speech went great, but the Q&A, well... Back. Oh man, it is not easy to get booed at an economic forum. So guess what he was talking about that led to that? Was it the whole comment? DACA repeal threats? Saying all Haitians have AIDS or Nigerians will never leave America to go back to their huts? Now I could keep on going, but I don't want to have a two hour video. Interestingly enough, it was something that I would have suspected would not have set people off. I realized how nasty, how mean, how vicious, and how fake the press can be as the cameras start going off in the back. <laughs> Now that might not seem like a big deal, but it was reported by the BBC, CNN, NBC, Al Jazeera, and pretty much every other news outlet. Because stuff like that barely ever happens. It's like giving a toast at your family's dinner and getting booed. Even everyone's favorite Russian propaganda newsroom commented on it. Although they did get one detail wrong. Apparently after comments about how vicious and fake the media can be, Trump was wooed. Because in Soviet Russia, we woo and sad in the melodic call like we are at funeral for a reporter of accurate news. Man, don't talk about fake news at a global economic forum that advocates for human rights. That's like making a speech to Boy Scouts and talking about your friend who had yacht orgies. Yeah, I know our motto is be prepared, but nobody was quite prepared for that one. So let's talk about his actual speech now. America is open for business and we are competitive once again. Yes, America is open for business. A weird thing to brag about when your government was literally closed for business less than a week ago and looks as though it might close again in two weeks, but whatever. The basic idea behind his speech was that America has the largest economy, the best workers, and a great new wave of tax cuts and deregulations. Because if for whatever reason you didn't know that, let our president yell it at you for 45 minutes. The other big point in Trump's speech was to redefine his America First policy. In the past, people interpreted it as putting America first, which really didn't make us seem to be the best partner. But in his speech, he specified that what America First really means is that America is going to do whatever benefits us first, but then if there are any scraps left over, we'll give it to someone else. Also, if something happens where we and someone else can both benefit, We'll probably do that, unless of course there's a better option for just us. The biggest point he made was that he expected every other country should do the same thing, which if I'm being honest, all countries probably already do, but you're just not supposed to say it. Now there was one leader, India's Prime Minister Modi, who was supposed to be the main speaker of the event, but unfortunately he hadn't been introduced to the Trump vortex of media attention. According to the World Economic Forum's website, Modi talked about countries' lack of ability to work together and keep up with their environmental pledges in a speech that was veiled in its anti-Americanism about as much as a video produced in North Korea. He went on to say, Many societies and countries are becoming more and more focused on themselves. It feels like the opposite of globalization is happening. But you know, he could have been talking about any country that made a long speech about prioritizing themselves over everybody else. 
Now, being that Modi is the leader of the largest democracy in the world, he is particularly keen to increase exports. Although, India wasn't all aligned behind their prime minister's speech. With prominent political actor and man whose name I hope I won't have to censor, Sandeep Dickshit, man that guy must have had a rough time in middle school, accusing the prime minister Modi of being too cozy with the globalists through his declaration that, essentially, India is open for business. At the end of this event though, one country emerged as the victor of the conference, China. Now you would expect that a communist country would have a fair amount to say at a global economic forum. So who is their speaker? Was it President Xi, Premier Li Keqiang? Nope, it was Jack Ma, a successful businessman and founder of Alibaba. He spoke at length on a myriad of issues from how women are good in the workplace to the need to continue international trade and not focus on protectionism and tariffs. That said, his speech focused a lot on the danger of automation. Hmm, I wonder why China would be concerned with automation leading to job loss in the manufacturing sector. Could it be that China relies on manufacturing more than Saudi Arabia does oil? Anyways, he gave an amazing speech that included a phrase that gets quoted over and over again by people talking about this convention, the IQ of love. The last century, people compete because muscle. No, not, this century is not muscle, it's the wisdom. And next is, I, I believe if a person wants to be successful, you should have a high EQ. But if you don't want to lose quickly, you should have a high IQ. But if you want to be respected, you should have, have high LQ, the Q of love. So those three Qs put together, a lot of men, they have a high IQ but low EQ, a very tiny LQ. <laughs> Women balance wise, they are the best. He talked about how his company has a disproportionately high portion of female executive employees for a tech company and how underrepresenting half of the population is terrible for business. The main point that was heard across this Davos Economic Summit was, interestingly enough, Donald Trump saying that countries needed to put themselves first and everyone else second while every other country said, well, maybe we don't do that. Overall, nothing too shocking happened though, with the strangest thing being everyone surprised that Donald Trump wasn't being treated like a lunatic by the other leaders. They even let him eat his lunch at their table. So there you have it. As always, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of That's All I Have To Say About That, click here. Please click here to subscribe and like below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.